Trump hysteria is one is a different thing, right? Like I experienced this, you know, in in 2020, right? I I publicly said I was voting for Trump, and I said, I, you know, at a. Why did you choose to go public with that? Just out of curiosity. Because I'm not a pussy. Right? But not everyone says who they're voting for, right? Like, well, why did you feel like it was important that you voice this opinion? I voiced the, I voiced my opinion because I was very afraid of the direction America would go if Joe Biden became president. And and at this point, I'm like 30 for 30, right? So the things that I was concerned about wind up, you know, manifesting themselves. It's also too, he's a, it's the, the problem with Joe Biden. If you just want to look from a, from a public standpoint on the world stage, he's, he like something's wrong with him. He has a, either a degenerative brain issue, something's wrong. Right. And so we only had these two people to choose from. And I, I even said in, in an insane world, I quoted Terminator two. I was like in an insane world, this was the sanest choice. And that cost me my record deal. My band turned on, turned against me. The entire uh, mainstream rock media, and I was a media darling. If you Google me, you know before that post, I've given millions of dollars away and to charities. Um, I've been sober for 14 years. I was a drug and alcohol counselor. I helped dozens and dozens of people in the music industry get sober. I've been awarded Person of the Year by Rock to Recovery in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I mean, you know, the list goes on and on and on, right? But once that changed, it was like, yeah. Tommy Vex is crazy. He's a baseless conspiracy theorist. You know, it was like, I'd, then I had an like an ex come out of the woodwork and try to meet to me to get $100,000. Wow. And I beat that case in, in criminal court. And then I got exonerated. She tried to take me to court again in, uh, in civil court, beat it there. I was exonerated by the judge of any accusations of domestic violence. And um, but that's not what the media posted, right? They just I became the enemy, yeah. And so there was there was this Trump hysteria where people were convinced that he was Hitler or something, right? Like that he was gonna we were gonna go and all the things that they it's said a cult, about him, bro. Well, yeah, they're like they're like well, he's gonna get us into World War Three and he, da da da. And yeah. now look where we are. Yeah, yeah, they're openly saying they want World War Three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, of- you guys are insane. Yeah. And I didn't. I don't get an apology, right? I, it just gets sw- swooshed under the table, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like I had massive. You not know, only Tommy. Not only does it get swooshed under the table, like the press is extra critical of you now, even if your name comes up. So it's like because you were going against the grain, and and a lot of the things that you were talking about actually came to have came to pass there's the p the the metal press is is more critical and they're they are you know it's not like oh well you well, know the, tommy was right and and this and that it's oh you know he's this bad guy that, that but they can't know, admit they were wrong well they won't do that but. well they're not gonna do that because well this i mean it's it, it it's other things too well they, they they're building a historical record of who you are yeah. and so it starts with one lie the mm-hmm. next day they double down on the lie then in a month, that lie is the truth, and they put it on Wikipedia. They put it in the archives. But these people, the problem with the what the the hive mind of of this these this kind of corporate environment is, they're so afraid, their their false concern is so mixed up, right? They're so afraid that like Trump's going to be Hitler that they start behaving the way the Nazis did, yeah. right? Like Gina Carano got canceled off what her Instagram. show. Yeah, she, no, she got canceled off her show, her show, and I actually yeah. misspoke about this on Brad Lee's podcast, and I was like, because she didn't put her pronouns in her bio, but the thing that people really were pissed off is that she had accused the far leftist as behaving as the Nazis did mm-hmm. during uh, pre-Holocaust Germany, right, yeah. during the Weimar Republic or whatever, and I, I, I don't think that that's wrong in the sense that and again, I'm saying pre-Holocaust, but it's a scary thing to be a person in supposedly a free country and having your platform taken away, your ability to make a living, yeah. having lies spread about you, and the machine of the media that what they do is, it's a civil crucifixion. Yep, mm-hmm. yep definitely. And the, the thing with the Gina Carano thing, not only that, but like they said, they accused her of doing something that she didn't do. Like mm-hmm. that isn't an ant, like she didn't say anything that was critical of Jewish people. She didn't say anything no, that no. that the Holocaust didn't happen. That she, like everything she said was like, "Look, you're just treating people badly." 
and she made a, a comparison that people could use against her is really what it was because it, it it's not but the the problem is is there are there are again there are a lot of similarities to the things that were going on like sure. I the 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 George Floyd riots were remarkably identical to the night of broken glass right yeah mm -hmm. right and people who don't know history don't even know what that means and they're like yeah. well i feel yeah. like there are similar things happening here and there are people who are you know there are certain people who are involved who are children when the, it happened the first time who we don't speak we don't say their names who are who are financing certain behaviors and certain groups to do certain things that are very reminiscent right. of the exact same historical issues that went on in the pre-World War II Germany. Do you see what Bill Maher said about communism? No, I haven't seen that yet. The, I, he, was, he, 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 he chose the other, you know, uh, early 1900s psychotic the, despots, the Red communists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Red Garden. He talked about how, and I think, I think there's a similarity between, you Definitely. know, what you're saying in this. Yeah. He was talking about how they try to change human nature. Mm -hmm. That they, they, they all believe in this vision, and so they enact this culture revolution and then that vision ultimately is just new everyone. Social, new socialist man. But it, right, right, right. But but the end result is they, you you drum up fervor, tribal rage, you tell everybody you know who the enemy is. It doesn't matter what the ideology is. Ultimately, it's cult authoritarianism that yeah. results in genocide of some sort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, the question it is, 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 that where, is that where we're going? There are, I think that the United States, because of our, and I'm going to, this is probably going to upset a lot of people. The United States is a unique country in the way that our government is formed. And it is uniquely resistant to things like totalitarianism. And it's uniquely resistant to uh, authoritarian impulses by a president or one individual. It's not that the U.S. is completely immune to it, but our republic you know our republican form of government does insulate us from that so i don't think that the us is in a situation where it's a an immediate danger but i do believe that there is an entire generation possibly two of people that are going to be coming out of uh high schools and colleges that have significant significant way significantly different ways of thinking so they don't approach the world the way that liberals approach the world they're mm -hmm. illiberal because they're taught to be illiberal in Paulo Freire but schools think about where this country is going to be in three or four generations that's the problem think, absolutely but think about this think about what the the greatest generation would say about all of us here right now if they were you know 20 years old right Seamus of Freedom Tunes did this bit where a bunch of leftists summon World War II soldiers from the past into today to help them fight the rise of the Nazis. <laughs> and so they're like, you know, these soldiers are like, what are we doing here? And they're like, the, the leftists are like, we need your help. Nazis are coming back. And they're like, they are. Well, we got to stop them. And then when they explain to the World War II soldiers what they're fighting for, the soldiers are shocked that interracial marriage is legal, that gay marriage is legal, because back then it wasn't. Yeah. It was like yeah. segregation still during World War II. And now now we're going back to, to segregation. You know, there, yeah. there are people that want to segregate, uh, segregate schools. And right, that, right. You know. Well, so ultimately my point is like the things that they thought were unacceptable or acceptable or otherwise back then are now by our standards completely unacceptable. So with the way things are going with young people, with these woke shows, with how movies are going, that's the track we are on, yeah. where the establishment machine is woke and crazy, and it's going to get crazier. But maybe we're looking at a, 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 fourth, a fourth turning, kind of a Strasshaut generational theory kind of thing. This could be the end where the snap happens, the crash, the, the, the fourth turning, and then 2030, 2028 and beyond or whatever could be more post-apocalyptic or reconstructionist. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know that I have a, a, an opinion on the fourth turning and stuff like that. I, I, I am not as familiar with that. Well, it's a, a strong men make good times, good yeah. times make weak men, weak men make hard times, hard times make strong men. So and we're so, in the hard times now? Or? Yes, weak men made hard, made hard times, and now yeah. we're in the hard times and people are being carved out of stone. See, I feel like we're making weak men still. No, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think that there's a concerted effort to continue that process. And yeah. I think that Definitely. as people, uh, as as parents continue to raise children that are mindful of, this, of the indoctrination, that's what's going to change things. Absolutely. I think, that the, I think that there's the fact that there is 
there is so i was just out in in la doing all the remain stuff and i was talking to someone that's going to remain remain nameless but and they were saying look they're like look the woke stuff you know they're like we i don't i don't think that people are going to be into it and i think that people are over it etc cetera, etc cetera. and i'm like yeah but the reason that people are aware of it and and that they're they're concerned with it is because they found out about it through probably through the the <clears throat> Uh, cameras and classes during COVID and stuff mm -hmm. like that and remote learning and stuff. But it took people finding out and then people actually pushing back to get to the point where like he feels comfortable saying, I think people are over the wokeness. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.